Hi, this is your teacher, Barb Rademacher, and I'm here with my Math Lab Quiz 7 and with the Wabbit Moo, is what it's called, TI-80 uh, for emulator. I have things blinking here, and I don't know what they are, and I'm feeling insecure. Okay, that's what that is. That shows the limit of the recording. Okay, now I feel okay. Um, this is my second time using Camtasia, and I'm all excited. All right, here we go. Let's look here, intermediate algebra students. Find all the square roots of 81. Well, remember we said in class that every real number, every positive real number, that's an important stipulation, every positive real number has two square roots a positive square root called the principal square root and the negative square root. Now, it would be a good idea to know that the two square roots of 81 are 9 and negative 9. However, you might not know that. What happens if you don't know? Follow the cursor over here as we go turn the TI-84 on and we clear the screen and I'm going to find the square root, the principal square root, of 81 by clicking here on the second key and then coming down to the x square key and clicking on that. That gives me a square root sign. Now I'm going to enter the number 81 and hit enter. The answer is 9. Now since I'm looking for all the square roots of 81, I'm going to enter in the answer box the principal and the negative square root. Here we go, 9, comma, negative 9. OK. Now, if you were to, uh, uh, if you want to convince yourself this is true, 9 times 9, or 9 squared, is 81, so 9 squared, what does that equal? 81. Well, let's make sure about the negative, and we have to include parentheses. Parentheses, negative 9, parentheses closed. Come over to the x squared button, hit x squared to get your little 2 there. Now hit enter, and you also get 81. You have just checked your work. It's a good idea to check your work. And we've convinced ourselves that 9 squared equals 81, so 9 is the, is the principal square root of 81. And the, uh, another square root of 81 is negative 9, which is the negative square root. And when you square that, you also get 81. So all things considered, I am completely convinced that I entered the right answers in the answer box. Next question. Okay, this you cannot do on your calculator. Um, when you're lucky enough that the index will divide evenly into your uh, exponent, your answer is going to be the base x to the 20 divided by 4 power, or the exponent divided by the index power. All right, let's come over here to the Exponent button and click on the Exponent button. 20 divided by 4 is 5, so I'm going to put a 5 here. That's my answer. I'm going to click Next Question. Ah, we have to find the negative square root of 289. Okay, I'll do that. I'm going to hit Clear over here on the calculator and I'm going to hit the negative button. Remember that the negative button and the subtraction button are two different buttons. Okay, so here I am. I'm going to hit negative. Then I need a square root sign, the square root radical, that second x square. And then I'll type the number 289 and hit enter. The answer is negative 17. So that's what I'm going to type in the answer box, negative 17. Now I'm going to click on Next Question. What is the square root of 1? 
This is the principal square root. Notice there's no negative in front of it. So we're just looking for the positive square root, which is also called the principal square root. I'm going to come over here to the calculator, say second x squared, type the number 1, and hit Enter. What do you know? 1 is the square root of 1. That's one of the terrific properties of 1, because 1 times 1 is 1. 1 can do all sorts of exciting things, as you'll discover. I'm going to hit Next Question. Aha! Type everything you see here in the calculator, including the parentheses. I'm going to say second x squared, left parenthesis right here above the 8 key. Now I'll, I'll click on the negative button, 8. I'll close my parentheses with the right parenthesis button over the 9 key. And now I'll type the x squared button because that will give me the little exponent 2. And now I'm going to hit Enter. The answer is 8. What happened here was the exponent inside multiplied the negative 8 by itself. So what we had was negative 8 multiplied by itself twice. That's negative 8 times negative 8. That's positive 64. So we had positive 64 in here, then took the square root of 64, which is positive 8. I'd better put in the answer there. And now I'm going to click Next Question. OK, both of these are perfect squares. The square root of 36 is 6. The square root of 25 is 5. So actually, this is probably easy to do by hand. But if I wanted to do it in the calculator, I would do it this way. I would click on the negative key. And then second x squared would give me the square root radical. Then I would say, what would I say? I would say 36 divided by 25. Notice we're still under the radical. Both of those numbers are under the radical. So it's OK. And then I'm going to hit Enter. Oops! I'm not supposed to give a decimal answer. Look at the blueprint. Simplify your answer. Type an integer or a fraction. Doesn't say I can type a decimal. So I'm going to use math frac. I'm going to click the math button. And frac is already highlighted. Frac means fraction. I'm going to click, I'm, I'm just going to hit Enter because 1 is already highlighted. Enter, and then Enter again. And look, there's my answer, negative 6 fifths. So I'm going to come over here to the Answer box. I'm going to hit the negative button. Then I'm going to come over here to the toolbar. And I'm going to click on the fraction key. I'm going to type a 6 on top and a 5 on the bottom. Ah, 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 ah. Click, then 5. OK, negative 6 fifths. I'm finished with this question. And I'm going to click the next question. All right, here we have another problem that you cannot do on the calculator. However, you can do fr um, um, rational exponents on this, where you say the answer is x to the 5 over 5, and recognize that 5 over 5 is 1. Or you can remember the rule that when the index equals the exponent, the answer is the base. So I'm just going to type the base which is x. The base holds up the exponent, especially if you've changed to rational powers or rational exponents. You'll have x to the 5 over 5, which is x to the 1. That makes x the base. OK, I'm going to hit next question. Here's 8. All right, I'm going to find the square root 
of 15 squared. All right, whenever you take the square root of, of a base that's squared, the answer is the base, 15. I'm going to put in 15 here, but then I'll show you on the calculator it's true. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to hit clear. I'm going to hit, uh, I'm going to take the square root radical, which is second, x squared. Then I'm going to say 15. And then I'm going to hit the x squared button, which gives me the exponent 2. And then I'm going to hit enter. And the answer is indeed 15. Let's go to the next question. We're going to find the square root of 0 0.16. So again, I'll get the square root radical by hitting second x squared. Then I'll say 0 0.16 and hit enter. And my answer is 0 0.4. Now, I think it's enough here to say 0.4, but why take a chance? Let's say 0 0.4. And then I'll hit the next question. Find all the square roots of 9. Again, that's a trick question. The square root of 9 is 3, but all positive real numbers have two square roots, a principal square root and a negative square root. So I'm going to give two answers here. 3, comma, negative 3. But then I'm going to convince myself it's true by coming over to the calculator and taking the square root of, of 9. And the answer is indeed 3. OK, we've just gone through quiz 7 and been able to do 8 out of the 10 problems on the calculator. I'm going to submit my quiz if I can drag this over. Yes, I can. I'm going to submit the quiz. Ah, I got them all right. Well, that makes me happy right there. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.